Hi, I'm Daphne Richards, and this is Augie. Our question of the week comes from David about slime mold. He's found it in mulched pathways in garden beds, and he wants to know if it's harmful and what to do about it. Well, with all the rain we've had this spring, and with the temperatures so warm, this substance has been showing up in many gardens. In fact, my friend Mike, who works for the Austin Fire Department, recently told me that he responded to a call from a school to check on a possible hazardous material found on the children's playground. So what did it turn out to be? Slime mold. Slime molds are unique creatures that don't fit into any categories that we're familiar with. Although they have fungus-like characteristics, they aren't fungi. They exist in nature as a blob that's often bright yellow and even sometimes red. Their preferred food source? Bacteria. They occur when there is high relative humidity and relatively warm temperatures, exactly the conditions that we had this spring. So on to David's actual question. Are slime molds harmful and what should we do about them? Although they are unsightly, dare I say gross, they're not harmful to humans or animals and they'll run their course fairly quickly, so there's no need to do anything about them unless you can't stand to look at them, in which case simply remove and toss them in the garbage or compost pile or just break them up with a rake or a strong jet of water. If slime mold returns, even when we aren't getting rain, it would be because the area is being over irrigated. Our plant of the week is wine cup, Caleroy involucrata. Wine cups are perennial and are listed to be slightly deer resistant, which basically means that the deer will probably choose to eat all the other plants in your garden before they eat this one. Wine cups form a beautiful sprawling mat across the surface of the ground and they're covered in flowers from very early spring until the heat of summer arrives. They need very little water and require very well-drained soil, performing best in shallow, gravelly areas and even preferring the small cracks between landscape pavers to a richly amended garden bed. So be careful using organic mulches around this plant or it might rot. Wine cup gets only about 6 to 12 inches tall, including the flower stalk, but it can spread up to 5 feet wide. In late summer, you should trim back any dead growth that occurred due to the heat, which will encourage a flush of growth in the fall. Wine cup should also be pruned back to its base in late winter before the new spring growth emerges. Another great thing about wine cup is that it grows very easily from seed, so that you can establish plenty of them in your garden without a lot of expense. As with our other wildflowers, wine cup seeds should be sown in the fall, while transplants should be planted in the spring and be sure to plant your wine cups in full sun. To do this week, it's time to divide any of your spring flowering bulbs that have now begun to die back and turn brown on top. You should also collect seeds from your spring annuals such as blue bonnets. And if you're still looking to plant a vegetable or two, it's not too late to plant beans, corn, squash, peppers, and lots of others. Just be very mindful of the heat and keep them watered well. We'd love to hear from you, so please, Visit klru.org ctg to send us your question or a plant of the week from your garden.